हेलो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द चैनल एंड दिस इज योर फ्रेंड डॉक्टर सुरेश एन वी हियर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर यू नो विविंग माय वीडियोस एंड आई होप दैट इट इज हेल्पफुल फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई एम हियर टू डिस्कस अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज दैट वॉज रिक्वेस्टेड बाई वन ऑफ द स्टूडेंट and i do feel that this is a very important uh, topic for the students and sometimes because they uh, they have to do it on the models and it is difficult to relate so i have tried to make it as simple as possible so today's uh, uh, topic is fundamentals of cavity preparation and before going ahead uh, i hope you know who is dr suresh and me and uh, been making videos for many days thank for all the love and affection and comments what you have shown on my channel so basically the fundamentals of cavity preparation are divided into two categories that is you have the initial cavity preparation and you have the final cavity preparation now you all know the specially when you read the shadow ones basically the initial cavity preparation is further divided into outline form initial depth primary resistance form primary retention form and convenience form one thing i would like to tell here is many of the students they tend to forget the word initial depth that's very important and the word primary is also very important because you also have secondary resistance and retention form that comes into the final step so we will not go into the final uh, steps of cavity preparation but you should know that there are basically two stages of doing cavity preparation now when you read from the textbook we get so much confused about these steps you know and we tend to wonder why they are divided into initial and final and you have to follow the same if you are an experienced practitioner please remember that basically these steps are divided into initial and final so that you can understand the steps better it is not necessary that you have to do it in your cavity preparation when you excel or or have an enough experience in the dentistry so what is the basic goal of doing cavity preparation uh, you all know that there are many reasons for cavity preparation it can be because of aesthetics it can be because of the decay it can be because of functional abnormalities and all these has to be corrected so that is the main goal of the cavity preparation and the first step which which we are discussing here today which is the outline form and the initial depth and i have divided into two categories that is the part one that is the outline form and the second one is initial depth so that you understand it better so what is the goal of the outline form and initial depth basically we want to remove all the decay and we want to remove the weak to structure now that's very important because you don't want to create a cavity which ends up fracturing the normal tooth and of course you have to do a cavity preparation so that when you are finally finishing and polishing it after the restoration it should be accessible you cannot make a margin where the finishing and polishing burrs may not reach so the first segment in the uh, initial step of uh, cavity preparation that is the outline form so we'll call it as step 1a and as you can see basically the outline form has to be imagined before you do a cavity preparation many of the students they think that the outline form is what uh, and when uh, you get it when you do a cavity preparation of course you get it once you finish a cavity preparation but you have to imagine it before the starting of the cavity preparation for example if you are going somewhere the goal of uh, your journey is to reach there but you will have to still plan that how you will go there you know whether you will go with an in a car or you know from which mode of transport so that is basically the steps guide you and tell you that you know at the end of the cavity preparation where you will be so there are factors which you have to consider before you know doing a cavity preparation and that guides the outline of the cavity preparation so outline is the one which you see from the top so we are not discussing the depth here we are just discussing where all the cavity should flow so the first factor is the distribution of caries of course that is very important that is very important because uh, you may have caries at one portion you may have it continuously involving all the teeth 
and or you may have two different type of uh, lesions at two different part of the tooth structure so lot of factors uh, has to be considered even when you are doing a cavity preparation and the caries is an important aspect in it so i will be talking here mostly about the dental amalgam and the composite and it will be mostly restricted to the class 1 cavity preparation probably in future we will streamline it to the class 2 cavity preparation so you may have heard your teacher telling you you should be doing conservative cavity preparation you should be doing uh, conventional cavity preparation so what is the difference between two conservative cavity preparation mainly aims on conserving the tooth structure whereas conventional cavity preparation it used to be dependent on a principle which is given by dr gv black what he said that suppose you have decay till here but if the decay, the fissures are still there beyond that what he believe that in future maybe that fissure will get involved in caries so if you have a decay in one side and you may have a fissure which is not involved in caries you still have to extend your cavity preparation that concept is no longer followed nowadays because we have so many non invasive procedures which we can uh, which which will help to arrest the uh, the pit and fissures which may not decay because there is no source for the nutrition so this picture you can see the first picture all of the fissures and the fossas are involved and whereas in second picture you can see that a small cavity preparation is done so for example if you are doing maxillary cavity preparation leaving the uninvolved oblique ridge basically conserve the tooth structure so that becomes your conservative cavity preparation but if the decay is there in the oblique ridge you have to involve it so the question of whether conservative or conventional only comes when you uh, check where all the caries is extended another most important uh, thing which we have to remember because we since we are going to more minimally invasive cavity preparations is if you have two separate lesions and if the distance between two carious lesion on the two structure is more than 0.5 mm then you can simply make two separate cavities and restore it so that will allow us to save good amount of natural two structure uh, which is not involved in the dental decay so the second factor is presence of any old restorative material for example if you have a composite you can repair it and in many a times what happens when you see a restoration you may see a decay at one portion and the other portion of the restoration is still uh, intact so you can repair the old composite you can only remove the decay and old restoration in one side and you can leave the rest of the composite uh, and just simply etch bond so of course you have to check whether the restoration is intact by taking you know doing proper clinical examination and having proper uh, radiographic examination amalgam although the textbook does say that you can make a cavity preparation uh, in one part of the amalgam restoration which is intact and then probably do the rest of the restoration but since amalgam old amalgam doesn't bond with the new amalgam it is i ideally uh, advocated that you should replace the whole amalgam restoration the third factor is which material you are using for restoration that's very important for example if you are using an amalgam you know that the amalgam has required specific shape of the cavity and if you don't have it probably amalgam won't stay in that so your outline has to be in a such a way that it facilitates the uh, restoration for composite since it is a bonded restoration you really don't have to extend it to all all over the tooth you can simply remove the decay and you can do the restoration so if you have a composite smaller outline of the cavity preparation of course the decay has to be removed if it is amalgam you may have to sacrifice more of tooth structure fourth factor which guides the outline form is the aesthetics now that's a bit confusing because this comes in class 2 we all know that in class 2 there is something called as breaking the contact 
so suppose you have uh, the premolar first premolar or second premolar and you have a small decay but on buccal side you broke a lot of contact and you did a amalgam restoration so what will happen when the patient smiles you can see that amalgam is visible so as you can see in the third image if you push the uh, buccal wall of the proximal box beyond the contact it allows the restoration to be visible and especially if the restoration is anesthetic that won't you know appear nice this is only when you have decay which is very small if you have more decay of course you have to extend your box so in order to compensate this situation your outline can be restricted on buccal side so as you can see in this image uh, i'm really sorry i think there is a mistake here in the image but uh, if you have a small decay and you can restrict the box on the buccal side and cut more towards the palatal side so your restoration will not be visible so that guides your outline the aesthetics does guide your guide your outline if it is a composite restoration probably it doesn't make any difference next factor is the occlusion now you know that when you have uh, when you occlude the upper teeth have contact points on the lower teeth and imagine you made a cavity preparation and the upper cusp is exactly touching at the margin between uh, the restoration and the natural tooth structure so there is a constant force which is put on on this junction so if uh, after removing the caries if you have a contact point falling in that area so you can do two things either don't reach that contact area or you can surpass surpass that contact area so that will help you uh, to either put force over the natural tooth structure or put force over the uh, restorative material so i hope that explains the uh, occlusion in a simple way and of course the type of final margin now we all know that we have to give bevel in cast restoration we have to give bevel in composite restoration so suppose in this image as you can see your initial outline ends here and you may give bevel so that basically extends your outline so if you know that you have you are supposed to give a bevel so you probably restrict the outline to a smaller uh, width and then give the bevel if you don't do that and if you make a big box and then give a bevel then your outline form becomes too big so that is uh, the problem uh, or the factor which you have to really consider when you are doing the cavity preparation and uh, the factor to be considered so the second segment that is initial depth so as you can see in this image basically it tells you how much deep your cavity preparation should go so we know till now we have read we have seen that how wide will be the cavity preparation now we are learning how deep would be the cavity preparation so the first factor to be considered here is the depth of caries so suppose you may have two situation here you may have caries just in the enamel and you may have caries which has reached the dentin so this will tell you how should be the how much your depth of the cavity preparation should be for example if the decay is there just in the enamel then you have to remove the decay but should you enter the dentin that is decided by which restorative material you are actually going to restore the tooth so if the dental decay has already reached the dentin then in the initial depth you should stop 0.2 mm below dentino enamel junction for class 1 cavity preparation uh, that is because it allows you to then decide whether you have to uh, take the whole floor uh, to the next depth or you can simply excavate in that one area and restore it with a glass enamel cement or a base whenever it is required so in the initial depth in the initial depth it should be always 0.2 mm into the dej so please uh, remember it the second uh, point is the type of restorative material 
what you will be using to restore the tooth for example the first scenario you have the decay but the, that is just restricted in the enamel and if your restoration is amalgam your cavity preparation has to go into the dentin and how much into the dentin that is 0.2 mm inside the dentin that is be 0.2 mm below the dentinomal junction now why is that why do you have to take the cavity into the dentin even when the decay is just in the enamel that is because amalgam is a amalgam is a brittle material enamel is a brittle material and if you uh, don't take the support of dentin and then there is a lot of chance of fracture of the tooth or the margin or the restorative material so if the floor is there on the uh, dentin then the forces will be observed uh, absorbed by the uh, dentin uh, and that helps the tooth and the amalgam if the decay is more then as we know that in initial depth it has to be 0.2 mm below dej and in the final step of cavity preparation you will decide how deep you want to go for cavity preparation the second material which is most commonly used is the composite so the first scenario the caries is there only in the enamel and in this situation your cavity will be just in the enamel and why is that because composite is a bonded material so you really don't need the dentin support for it if the decay is already entered the dentin and then you probably the same rule will apply for composite that is you have to stop 0.2 mm below the dj and then decide how deep you would like to take in the final stage of cavity preparation so in this uh, everything you also come across a word called as enameloplasty when you read the book stradovan now probably i would like to make a separate video but what is basically enameloplasty is that you may have a, a pit pit basically it is very small uh, in the opening and in the deeper portion it is uh, widened so what happens is your brush doesn't reach and once the organism uh, is enters that area and they get the nutrition then the decay starts inside the pit and that cannot be cleaned so basically in enamel plasty what we do is we open up the top portion so what will happen is the your brush can reach there the saliva can reach there the most important thing you have to remember is that if you are doing an enamel plasty there you do not require any restorative material to be placed so it is just that you are recontouring the tooth structure so that it becomes self cleansable so this can help you in the outline form i will try to make a few more videos on enameloplasty so my dear friends uh, this is the first time i have done a live interaction and i know that will require a lot of uh, improvement but if you have any suggestions please do leave it in the comment section and please do tell me what else i need to improve and i hope that you all are safe please do subscribe to the channel and i will see you once again in the next video thank you so much